YouTube world, Sean here. So today I'm going to be doing an install video on the gauge cluster that would come in a Turbo S or the Players General or the XP Pros, uh, installing that into my 2020 S4 1000. So the S4s or the S models didn't come with that gauge cluster that sits right in front of the steering wheel. Um, so I'm gonna be retrofitting this into my machine. I'll supply the part numbers for you guys, show you what needs to be done to get it to fit. There is a little bit of custom fabrication that's involved, so I'll show you how to do that as well. Uh, without further ado, let's get started on this video. All right, so here are the parts that you're going to need for this install. I'm gonna put the part numbers in the description below as well as I'll just make them pop up on the screen for a brief second here. So if you need to, you can pause the video and write them down. But really, you're gonna need the gauge cluster, the bezel, the mounting bracket, some 10 millimeter screws. I found these in a bin that I have, just my miscellaneous screw bin, um, but you can pick those up at the hardware store as well. You're gonna need some one inch aluminum square stock and then a U-bolt clamp. And I'll put the size of U-bolt clamp I also uh, picked up. Um, as well, that's not in this picture right here. You're going to want to um, get some solder, heat shrink, because we are going to have to extend the stock wiring harness. So I'll show you how I did it as well, and we'll get started with this part. But here, like I said, these are the main parts that you are going to need. It's a pretty simple install. It does take a little bit of fabrication, like I said, but uh, anyone who's mechanically inclined can definitely do this. So let's get started with the install. Okay, so first things first, we need to disconnect our battery. Uh, it should be under your seat. Um, we, since we are going to be extending out the gauge harness, we obviously are going to be cutting those wires and we definitely don't want any power to that. Um, so once you've disconnected the battery, you're going to remove the hood and remove the two T40 torque screws. So it's going to be that screw right there and that screw right there. That's going to actually give us access to this upper dash piece. If you have a front windshield, go ahead and remove that at the same time because we can't pop that dash piece off without it being there. So um, we need to get access to the harness that's plugged into that gauge right there, the main gauge, as that's the one that we need to extend so that it can route to this little pocket right here behind the steering wheel. So we'll add about 10 inches of wire to that. And that's gonna give us enough room to move that connector over there so we can plug it into our new gauge. So I'm gonna get this all torn apart really quick and then we'll continue on. Okay, so now that we've got the windshield removed, the T40 bolts out, we can now uh, pop this front panel loose. So all you have to do is grab it and really push forward towards the cab on both sides and it'll break loose. Behind this panel is going to be right there, that gray plug right there. That's going to be the plug we're going to need to extend the wires on. So go ahead and unplug that. And then we're going to add about 10 inches of additional wiring. So that's gonna create a longer harness so it can reach over to the new gauge by the steering wheel. Um, keep in mind, this is the part where you will need to cut and solder, uh, heat shrink your connections, make sure they are watertight, um, because obviously we know, as you can tell how dirty the underside of this is, water and dust and everything else gets back there. So uh, I'm gonna pull this plug out really quick, I'll show you. I actually already did cut, splice, and solder and everything, this plug to extend it, but I'll show you exactly what I did. Okay, so this is the harness plug right here. And I actually cut this back about two inches um, just to give myself enough room to splice this extra wiring in. Um, there's going to be six wires. This yellow and green wire that are twisted together is how it came from the factory. I think to give you, to show you a difference between this other yellow wire, they used two different yellow wires. They're the same color. Uh, so it just tells you which one's which, which also is helpful when you're splicing the other end of the connection to know which yellow wire you're splicing into. Um, so what I did was I actually did it individually. I just got some black wiring since this is all taped up, added about 10 inches of wiring, and then I soldered each of these connections together. 
I ran a tube of heat shrink over there and, and shrunk it down so that way these connections are watertight. So like I said, there's six wires to do that to on this side and then you do it uh, and you know 10 inches down the line to solder back to the original harness. Once you've done that, you can rewrap it again and then you're ready to go. So then we'll just relocate this harness and move it over to where it needs to be and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so now that we have this harness plug uh, extended, we're just gonna run it back down through where it's going to ultimately end up. So I placed a flashlight down in the uh, driver's side floor uh, board of my razor so you can see it, but this plug is going to actually run down through that hole right there. And then we can go ahead and put this dash piece back on. So just pop that back into place for right now. Come over here, put your steering wheel all the way down as low as it'll go, and then come find your plug, which is right here. So this plug, now that it's extended, it's going to end up basically coming out right here. So there's a, a little gap right there in between the plastic and the steering column that you're just gonna feed that through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick here. And once again, see if I can do this one-handed, but it's gonna go right. Let's see if I can get an angle here. Right there. Up and in. And basically just like that. So now it's just sitting right on that steering column right there. Your plug is extended and it's ready to be plugged in. So let's get started on the next part, which is the fabrication part. All right, so now we're ready to move on to building this bracket. So take your one inch uh, piece of aluminum stock, square stock, and you're gonna cut three and a quarter inches off of that. Um, for time intensive purposes, I went ahead and got this bracket already made. So I'm just gonna give you the dimensions of it and show you how to do it. So this is my bracket. So I cut off, like I said, three and a quarter inches. Once I did that, I marked the center of it. And then I actually measured from one side to the other off the center. Um, we have to notch this out because it's gonna sit directly on that steering column. And that's what's gonna give this the stability when you run the U-bolt clamp up through, it's gonna be, the steering column's gonna be sitting right in between that. So you're gonna round that out. This from right here to right here is right at about an inch and a half, just a hair over an inch and a half. As well, I notched it down to half an inch. So this is half an inch um, between, that's to give you your total uh, circular or half circular dimension. Cut it out on both sides so that it's even. And then next thing you'll do is you're going to um, drill your holes. So I flipped it over. I took now my mounting bracket for the gauge and I actually set it on top of there. Once I've had it on top of there, I actually marked the holes. I drilled, I pre-drilled holes all the way through and then I ran back through a 5 16 drill bit. So I ran these back through to find, do the final size hole. As well, with this U-bolt, when it's connected or going through those holes, it's not perfectly vertical. Each of the, the um, threads sticks out both directions a little bit, which it made it really hard to originally push this U-bolt all the way through, it really wouldn't go. So I ended up wallowing out these holes a little bit, making them more oval on the top and on the bottom. That gives you enough play for this U-bolt to go all the way through to cinch down on this around the steering column. So that's what this guy looks like. From there, we're actually ready to assemble our gauge um, and everything and get it ready to go. So you're gonna take your gauge, you're gonna take your mounting bracket right here, and then you're gonna take the back half of your gauge bezel and it's just gonna sit right on top. You'll line all those holes up um, and then you're gonna screw it all down. So I'm gonna get that done really quick and then we'll get back to it. All right, 
right, so now that we have our gauge, the back half of our gauge is all put together, we're gonna install the front part of the bezel. So it just snaps together in four places. Um, you're gonna start with the upper, make sure that's all intact. Push down on these tabs. there, right there, right there, and right there. So. so we are ready for install. So here's our bracket. It's going to go this way. It's going to sit right on top of that bracket just like so. And then this is going to bolt in. So I'm going to go move over to the razor and we'll get this all bolted in. Okay, so now that we're in the razor, uh, we're gonna assemble this thing. So we're gonna start with your bracket right here and you're going to uh, make sure the holes, because when you drill those holes, it actually offset the holes a little bit between these two, uh, the width of it, the holes are gonna be further to the back. Uh, you're gonna take that bracket and just set it right on the steering column. Once you do that, you're gonna run your U-bolt through in between the shock part and the actual steering column and then up through your bracket just like that so once you have it right here the next step is to install your gauge um, so take your gauge and you're going to take your harness and you're going to plug that in first so we'll get this plugged in here and then once you've plugged that in you're just going to set that gauge right on top of your bracket. Don't worry about getting the exact angle and whatnot right. The, the first component we want to do is just make sure that we get this thing kind of snug. So go ahead and thread your nuts down onto the U-bolts. From here, you want to adjust your steering wheel. Just rotate it and make sure that it's not making any contact with the front part of uh, this, the uh, bezel. Get it as close to the steering wheel as you can be without it touching because that's gonna allow for your column to be able to still move up and down. You're gonna center it. And once you get it centered, then you can tighten these down. So. Um, we'll get this done really quick here. All right, not moving anywhere. You can adjust your steering wheel up now, down. And the nice thing about this being bolted to your column is if you do raise it up, you can still see it. It's not just always facing one, one way. It always faces around. So. Uh, you got the plug in, you got it bolted down. Hey, let me move this down really quick and just show you. So now that it's bolted down, you can see kind of the final product of that. We'll raise this back up and we're gonna fire this thing up. Okay, so we got the key, we're gonna turn this on, watch it cycle through the gauges, do it start up. It's gonna bring us to the main screen. Uh, disregard the check engine light and the power steering uh, light. Those will go off when you do start the machine up. But um, I'm going to go through these gauges really quick and just show you what the buttons do as well as what it does on the or displays on the gauge. So let's start with the uh, up and down arrows. When you flip those, it's going to go through and change this menu right here or what displays. So that's trip one, trip two, your battery volts, engine hours, uh, your service intervals. So it'll tell you when you need to perform your next service interval and you can actually update that as well. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, your engine coolant temperature as well as your odometer reading. Um, when you hit the mode button, it's going to change that upper menu. So or upper screens from miles per hour. So that is your speed to your RPM to your also your coolant temperature right there. Um, and then if you actually hold down the mode button, it brings you to your options menu. So 
When you flip through now on the options menu, you can check your codes if you have any codes um, for your Razor. You can change your units from miles per hour to kilometers an hour. Uh, you can change your units of coolant temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Update your clock, so change your, your time on your uh, display. As well, you can change the color of this display. So it can be either blue or you can go to red. And then you can also change the brightness of it. So you can go down in brightness or you can go all the way up. Uh, lastly, you can change your service hours, so how often you want it to remind you to perform your routine uh, service intervals. And then we'll exit, and so that'll take you back to that main screen. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel. I'm always trying to post new content, things that we all want to do to our razors or um, if you've checked out my channel, I have a bunch of other DIY videos on there, things I do to my fifth wheel or my truck, different things like that. But um, this in particular, uh, I really am excited to get this gauge in installed as well. My next video is going to be uh, changing out this gauge and installing the whole ride command dash piece and installing ride command in this unit. Uh, these are the two things that I wish that this unit came with. Unfortunately, I had to go with an S4 model because it wouldn't fit or it would fit in my toy hauler and the XP 1000 would not fit in my toy hauler. It was like four inches too long. So I'm gaining back the amenities that uh, the Ride Command Edition XP 1000 had that I would have liked. The other thing that I have done, if you haven't checked it out yet, is I swapped my front end out to the uh, Fang Light front end. So we got our Fang Lights on there now. Pretty much everything that I wanted in that ride command, um, I was able to get done now in, in this unit, which at this point I love this Razor. I'm super happy with it. It's been a great machine. So just these little uh, fancy updates are the things that I was always wanting in it. But once again, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video.